Hi there, it's Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today is going to be a revisit to this Truckatronic, this Corgi Truckatronic Convoy that I failed to fix in the video that I released today. So basically, I don't know when you're going to watch this, hopefully I'll be able to get the video out quite, quite soon. But I read all the comments and then I sort of thought, oh yeah, actually a lot of this makes sense. So basically just a very, very quick thing what happened here. So basically this is a 1979 radio control toy. It's a truck with a trailer, you've got a steering wheel here and it looks like you go forward and backwards via this controller here. Now what happened was, it's making all the right sounds and everything, but there's so many gears on it that's cracked. The back wheels make the noise but they don't turn and more importantly the front wheels are not steering. I did manage to get them steering when it was up in the air when there was no weight on it, but as soon as I put any weight on it, it just wouldn't steer and the motor just kept stopping because the gears are not really aligned, they're worn, they're this, they're that, the other. So basically I spent probably three or more hours on it and I had to give up because I was just going around in circles and I wasn't getting anywhere. It was getting slightly better but then just so far away from working I gave up on it. But after reading all the comments it's occurred to me that, yeah, actually, that's very correct. A lot of people said, why didn't I clean the motors out? Now, I didn't actually think about that at all, but having watched the eBay repair challenge between me and Tronix Fix, he had 240 toys with dodgy motors in them. There was a black gunk inside. So, maybe the steering motor might have been weak. So maybe the gears and stuff were aligned okay, but because the steering motor was so weak, maybe it just kind of seized at every available opportunity because it didn't have like the torque behind it to push it through. So what I'm gonna do is I'm revisiting this and I'm gonna try to fix the steering. If I can get the steering working, then I will spend more time on the rear gearbox because the rear gearbox was a complete headache for me as well. But I kind of gave up on that early because I thought there's no point in spending hours on that if I can't get the steering working. So if I can get the steering working, I'm willing to put the time into the rear gearbox and then we might have more luck. Now I'm armed with more tools this time. So basically everyone's saying to me that if I use super glue with baking soda, then it is like a rock hard repair. Now I haven't got baking soda, but I've got bicarbonate of soda, which I believe is the same thing. I've also got baking powder, but apparently baking powder is different. But this is supposed to be the same as baking soda. So I'm hoping by putting super glue on and mixing that on it, that it will work. For other parts that just need gluing, I now have super glue activator because I was told about this from a viewer that told, well actually a couple of viewers told me about it, but uh, after some, uh, one of them like, told me how good it works, I thought, well, I might as well give it a go. So apparently, you put super glue on one side, activator on the other side, and when you stick them together, it's like an instant repair. Now, I've got to remember to wear gloves because I could imagine, because I always muck up with super glue, that if I did that, I could imagine for the next week, I'm going to be walking around with stuck fingers, so I have to be careful. Now, as well as that, I don't know if you remember, but remember ages ago when I did that Wii with the stuck discs inside and I was an idiot and instead of taking it apart I was trying to yank the discs out and in doing so I stripped one off the gears so I had to make a little mod where I had to pull a little bit of wire so the, the disc could load in and also out and it does work fine but obviously if I just taken it apart to begin with it would have worked well well I never knew you could buy gears and after that video everybody told me that you can buy gears for pennies on eBay so I bought a load of gears, well not now, I bought these ages ago because of that Wii video for whatever it was, two or three pounds, three or four pounds, I'm not too sure, for a whole bag of gears. Now annoyingly, on the Wii, none of these gears, I don't know how many gears are here but there must be a hundred between them and none of these gears worked. Uh, 64, so there's probably 64 in each. Uh, so I couldn't get the Wii working with this, but that's not to say that one of these gears isn't gonna fit the, the gear in the steering here, because the one I'm worried about is I've got a worm wheel on the motor and then there's another gear next to it. And the gear next to it looks like the teeth. Not only has it got a crack, but the teeth look like they're worn down. So I'm hoping that one of these might fit. So I'm gonna put more effort into this and I'm gonna do my best to get this thing working. It might not be a lasting repair, but I just wanna see it working in my kitchen because it was from 1979. I think this has probably been laid up for the last 30 years. So 
it would be nice to see it work again. So I'm going to take it all apart again. I'm going to fast forward all, all through that. And then when I get the motor out from the steering, that's when I'm going to start kind of, you know, like talking about the filming and stuff again. So I'm not sorry, not talking about the filming, but I'm going to be talking about me trying to fix it. Now, uh, if I can't fix the steering, there's absolutely no point in me even touching the rear gearbox. So I'm still going to concentrate on the steering. So let's get this thing up and running. And as well as that, I've also got some UV glue as well that I uh, normally use. I forgot to mention a viewer also had one of these when uh, he was a kid and he told me how it works so basically I was really confused about how this back thing works but apparently I think when you reverse it keeps moving up and down like this so uh, when you put it onto the trailer it's just a case of timing it correctly to get it on so and he said it ate through the batteries as well and it was really slow and I think he might have said it was noisy so I'm sure it's not actually gonna be a great toy but it would just look great to get it working again Yeah, look at that. Nice. Look, I didn't think there was that much on it. Wow. Okay. Glad I did this now. See, this is a great thing about YouTube and the comments because basically I can put a video out there and it's always possible to revisit the video because there's so many people out there with much, much more knowledge than myself and then they can put down what they recommend needs doing. And then you see other people can then sort of agree or disagree. And uh, between everybody, there's kind of a chance then that these things can get, these things can get fixed. Okay, it's now gone three in the morning and I started this before midnight. So yet again, this thing has just eaten up hours and hours of my time. Now, I know I'm mad for spending so much time on this. It's just that when you kind of get stuck into it, you, you end up putting so much time in that you kind of want to get it working. Just noticed in here I've got a worm wheel as well. And it looks to be a lot longer than this one. I wonder if it's longer, whether there'd be more chance of gripping. Do you know what? I might try. I might try to change the worm wheel and that one over to this one and this one because maybe this is made to go together. Can you see? I mean, I, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just guessing that. So even if this didn't have the same amount of teeth as the other one, would it matter? Because this is just transferring up to another gear on top. So if these two fit it together then we might be on to a winner. Now they might not because they both might be a fraction of a millimetre smaller than the other ones, but I think it's worth a try. So, it's the next day now, and about three hours passed last night, and probably about half an hour so far today. So a lot of time has gone into this little truck, but we are getting somewhere. So the reason I've had to fast forward through it all is because the amount of hours spent on this 
I can't, even if I break it down and fast forward all the bits that I think are not necessary, it's still going to probably be about an hour and a half footage and I can't let you watch that. The video would be unwatchable because I've still got to do the rest of the truck. It would end up being a four hour video and it's just not, it's just not feasible unfortunately. So uh, let me explain to you what I did instead. So to begin with I took apart the motor which was relatively easy. There's just tabs at the back on each side and you take them out and then you have like the rotor in the middle. Now where the, there's probably proper names for this like armature, rotor, this, that and the other conductors communicator I don't know but uh, I'm just gonna make it simple I'm just gonna call it the rotor that spins in the middle and then I'm gonna call it the contacts that hit against a rotor that spin in the middle so it wasn't that 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 dirty but where the contacts hit the motor it was dirty so if you have a look here these are the q-tips that I use the cotton buds and this was the first one and I was really surprised about the amount of gunk that came off it so basically where the contacts were hitting it there was two like scorch marks black marks on the actual contact so I had to clean that up so that would have definitely be making a bad connection and where they're touching the copper on the rotor that they, they were making a uh, uh, they were must have been making a bit of a poor connection the motor is no longer squealing but we still have a huge amount of play forward and backwards and there's not really much I can do about that I don't personally have a load of different plastic bearings or anything like that maybe it's something I could look into in the future I'm limited to the tools that I've got here which is not very many so I did that, put it back together, and uh, yeah, the motor, well I didn't put it back together, the motor was working nice, but I still had the problem of the worm gear kind of slipping against the cog. So I found the replacement cog, I made the hole in the middle bigger, but actually when I put it all back together the original cog was working better than the replacement cog, but because of reading all the comments, I now know that this worm wheel has to be at the, like, the high point of the cog, so it can't be here, and it can't be here, this side, it's got to be at the high point in the middle. Yep, so that's where it works best. Now the problem is because we have a huge amount of play on the motor this way, this was just slipping out all the time. As you've seen in the original video, it was just spinning. Luckily, I found a worm wheel in my little bag of tricks from eBay that was twice, near enough twice the length of this, but the same diameter. So I fitted that into here, and you can see now it's much, much longer. If you have a look right in there, you can see how much this sticks out now. You can see that that looks much longer than this one here. So, when I put it back together, this was working perfectly with this cog here. So when I stripped it and just had this cog, this cog, this shaft and this cog here, everything was working perfectly time after time after time. But every time I put it back together, it stopped working. The weird thing is, if I took this cog out and then concentrated from this cog forward, this was all working fine. So every time I turned this, the wheels would turn absolutely fine. So if we think about it in two halves, the back half worked fine on its own and the front worked part work fine and so on. As soon as you put them together, it stopped working. Now, every time the motor sees this up, if you give it a little tap here, then it starts moving again. So obviously there is a bit of an issue with the motor and it must be to do with the play in it. But what I found is when I put it back together, there's a little clutch mechanism type thing here where if the wheels are jammed, it's designed to not let the, the, the gears and stuff strip by just turning. So this is on a spring, and once it hits a certain, I presume, like the force, tension, torque, then what happens is it just spins freely to save the stripping off the gears. Well, this was just, it was fine when it was in the air, but as soon as I put it on the ground, any bit of tension on these wheels, and this would just spin freely. So obviously it wasn't doing the job properly. So I tried to stretch the spring, I tried to push this down, nothing was working. So I had to end up resorting to super gluing it all, so the clutch thing's no longer working. So in theory now, if you were to hold this and turn it on, maybe the motor could burn out or maybe the gears could strip. I don't think realistically that's gonna happen, but that's what it's designed to do. So obviously it's an important part of it that I've now removed because no matter what I do, it's not working. Now amazingly with the super glue, I tried this activator here and it is amazing. I doused this in super glue, sprayed this on it within about two or three seconds, the whole thing had gone to a nice crusty white and it is rock hard. So I'm hoping my days with annoying super glue is over. I think that activator is the answer to my prayer. So that's good. So then what happened was, I brought that down uh, to the gear, the gold gear at the bottom down here. Hopefully you could just see that in here. And basically that was working perfectly, but all it did is it shoved the problem along one. And this gear here then started to skip every time it met resistance against this gold gear here. And annoyingly, this gear is attached to this 
potentiometer. So this is the thing that must tell it to stop when it gets to a certain level. Now annoyingly, a potentiometer isn't really normally part of a gearbox, so the inside of it there is naturally quite a bit of play because all it's doing is just turning on like a copper track. So basically I couldn't get rid of that play. It didn't matter how much I tried to tighten up the potentiometer, there was nothing there to tighten up. If I tried to kind of like crush it down and bend it, there was still play. So what I had to do to combat it was that white plastic gear at the bottom that does the actual turning, this one here, this one here, what I had to do is that goes into the black plastic of the gearbox. So the gear, the white gear has something similar to this on top and then the black plastic goes like this around it and there was about a millimetre of play like that. So what I had to do is I had to get rid of that play. Obviously if the potentiometer was perfect and really tight I wouldn't have to get rid of the play but it's not. So I had to get rid of the play not in the potentiometer but in that gearbox casing. So what I did is if you can imagine there was like a, imagine this is gearbox casing, can you see that there's play in here like that? So what I did is I put a bit of grease in there and I poured super glue down there and baking soda, this stuff here. And when I pulled it out, it had kind of closed up this hole a little bit, but I did it just on one side. So I pushed it right the way over. So I pushed it over to the side near the gear and then I filled up this side here. So now essentially what I've done is I've moved the hole along a little bit. Now it doesn't matter that the potentiometer is slightly off above because it's all gonna kind of move over a little bit anyway because there's play in that top section. And now when I've done all that, at long last, we do have something that resembles steering. It's weak. It's not particularly, well it's not weak, but it's not particularly strong and every now and then it does seize up, but it does appear to be working. So watch this now, if I turn this on and turn this on, oh, watch this, that side and that side, there you go, it's seized up there. But what it is, is this is on the flat at the moment. And what you need to remember is when it's moving, it's gonna be much easier to turn. And with this thing here, I believe it doesn't actually allow you to turn because every time you go to stop, the turn thing doesn't work. So it's, uh, it's just like driving a car without power steering. When you're on the move, you can turn the steering wheel really easy. When you're stopped, if you're driving a heavy van, trying to turn that steering wheel without power steering, I had a Transit ages ago with no power steering, and honestly, you need forearms like Jeff Capes to be able to pull that uh, steering wheel round when there's no power steering, when you're stationary. So when the thing is moving, there's gonna be a lot less strain on this. So if it can move a bit, which it can now, I think when it's moving, it's gonna be okay. So watch this now, if I just place this down here, now make a bit of room. So let's move it forward and back. Now it's not ideal and it's not turning a huge amount, but the fact is it is turning. So I think I'm happy to run with that at the moment. So right now I'm calling that a success and I'm happy with it. Now I've got a slight issue where every now and then when I press this down the steering turns so I took this apart just to see annoyingly I can't get that screw out but I thought I'd quickly show you the inside of it anyway because some of you are going to be interested. I particularly like these kind of, uh, but th there's only two here so these are going to be variable resistors aren't they because there's just two. I've been told that if there's three contacts down then it's a uh, potentiometer but if there's two it's a variable resistor. So if you have a look at them they're nice and old aren't they? Look at those ones with the wiper thing in the, uh, you can't see it's the other way around, but uh, yeah, so you turn that to turn the resistance, so it's just basically like a track that goes round. It's quite nice, isn't it? You can just hear everything's just whining, just got whining everywhere, <laughs> which is great. So now what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be concentrating on this rear gearbox. Again, I'm sure hours and hours and hours will pass, so it's just going to be a case of me fast forwarding through it again. So this is what I'm going to be doing. At the moment, everything is just moving. So for example, if I go to, uh, check this out, look, look how loose the uh, main cog, well, as I say that now, it's rock solid, there we go. The main cog on the motor, look, look how free that is. That's just, that just slides on and off really easily. Yeah, so that's going to need gluing. The next one's going to need gluing. The next one's going to need gluing. And I'm just going to glue every single one. And hopefully, we might be able to get some movement out of it. So that is what I'm going to be working on right now.
Okay, so it's starting to come together now. Change that gear, that gear, that gear, that gear. So all the small gears. And now when I turn the bottom one here, that turns that one, which then turns that one, which turns that one, which turns that one ever so slightly, which then turns the axle, because you see the axle's moving now. Yeah, very slowly round. And if I turn the top one, uh, it's slightly harder to turn that one. Not sure if that one's going to work, but again, the axle is turning. So we are getting there bit by bit. So to fix the cracks in the gears that I can't fix, what I'm doing is I'm putting super glue in, then I'm sprinkling baking soda into it, then I'm using the activator on top of it. Hopefully we'll give it a bit of strength. Right, here we go. The moment of truth. Let's see if anything happens with this rear gearbox. So turn on here. And on here, nope. Oh, yeah, no, it's not turning. Right, so it's not turning that way at all, but it is turning that way. But uh, what's happening here? They're all turning. That's oh, look, it's the clutch again. Look, can you see the clutch? So this gear's turning here, but it's not forcing the other one to turn. Well, at least the steering is still working. Oh, I think I'm going to be in for a long one on this. It's starting to lose interest, if I'm honest with you. Right, I'm going to dismantle it again. I'm going to keep working on it and uh, see if I can get to the bottom of it. I'm going to stop filming now because I've just been filming for hours again today, another over two hours has gone by today. Oh, this is a pain, it really is. This is the most challenging thing I've ever done, <laughs> if I'm honest with you. Well, fixing wise, not in life, obviously. Uh, hmm. Yeah, I'll get back to this later on. Okay, so these gears that I've replaced, the problem is they're just a fraction of a millimetre too big and it's causing it to there's too much strain on it so I'm going to try try to just take the edges off each of them by just rubbing it around this uh, wet and dry paper here this sandpaper just to see if I can reduce it just a little bit that might make a difference Okay, so after sanding down those little gears a little bit, it is definitely working better. So if you look now, I've only got the front few gears attached. So that's that way. That's the other way. That way definitely sounds weaker. At least it is going both ways. But what I'm worried about is there's also issues with this back thing as well. So with this back thing here, it looks like there's, I haven't really studied it too much yet, but it looks like there's a kind of like middle gear here which flips up and down to uh, operate this trailer thing, you know, for the trailer, the hitching. And even without any gears attached, so right now I've got the main middle clutch gear out of it. So basically this thing is only just the axle with a gear on and these little gears here watch this when I go to turn it right so see it's stopping there and it's stopping there so basically it's just jamming up both ways I do it so obviously there's wear in that gear that's flipping up and down and around as well so part of me really is think, thinking that I'm wasting my time on this but I'll continue because I've gone so far on it now I will continue longer 
Again, so the gear on the rear axle here, which flips up to allow the fifth wheel, you know, the trailer hitch thing to operate, was also cracked and amazingly loose on the axle. So what I've done is super glue, dropped it into the baking soda, and then put activator on it. Super glue, dropped it into the baking soda and put activator on it. Hopefully it's going to make the bond with the axle stronger, but I really don't know if it's going to last. Right, I've just taken off the uh, back thing off the motor and you can see there is quite a bit of dirt in there. So hopefully when I clean that it will give a bit more power to the motor. And then it might be able to fight through this gearbox because I'm having major, major problems at the moment. Yeah, I don't know. I think some of this is just grease, you know. But maybe if it's on there, maybe it's uh, making the motor work not as good. I don't, I don't actually know now. Not so sure. I'm going to clean it anyway. And then I can put a drop of grease on the axle where it goes through these little bearings here. Okay, I've absolutely flooded it with grease in there. Clean up the motor. Let's see now what's happening with it. No. Oh, I don't believe this. Right, let's see what's happening. Right, so it's jamming up. Right. Oh god, I'm so close. I'm so close to giving up. Oh I've been on this for hours. Hours. What it is is teasing me, you see. If it was just failing completely, I would stop, but I'm just getting further and further. It was spinning one way. It actually sounded nice. It wasn't particularly noisy, and it looked to be actually quite fast. And that's the problem. It keeps just giving me a little bit at a time. Well, I'll take it apart again. Uh, take it apart again, see if I can work out. And then get back to the filming after. Okay, so what I'm going to do is... Because that's a different gear here that I've put on. I'm going to try to sand this one down. You can hear how nice the motor is now. Because these plastic gears, some of them are just slightly bigger diameter than the, uh, than the one that I took off. I can leave that old one on there and try to sand it to the same amount. It's like a lathe. Right, I'm going to clean that up and then try that one. Okay, here we go. Let's see if it's working. Come on, please do this. Yes, yes, it's going around both ways. Brilliant. One way is a lot faster than the other, but I don't care. Ah, oh. ah. Oh. 
you don't know how good that feels. I have been hours on it. See if the steering still does anything. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. A bit. Actually, that gearbox now is working a lot better than I thought it would. And there's a fair bit of strength there. I reckon there would be enough strength. I reckon there would be enough strength to make the wheels go round and from the ground. So luckily it's going to go a lot more faster forward than backwards, so maybe that was always the case. Actually, I should be able to measure that, shouldn't I? By going across the motor to see if there's more voltage going backwards, then I know whether it's my gearbox, which is not very good, or whether it's actually been designed like that. So, if I was to go on there and here, I've got 2.6 volts in reverse and 2.1 volts going forward. Okay, well that doesn't make any sense. Double check that again. Yeah. Okay, so there's actually more volts in reverse. I wonder if that's to do with because of the light. Let me see if the light goes on. Oh, of course, I'm not going to know. No, it wouldn't be, would it? Uh, right, okay, so obviously the gearbox is not as good in one direction as the other direction. But you know what? I don't care. I just want this thing to move. I don't care if it goes like this. I just want it to move. Right, okay, so it is nearly complete but I have to give up on one part I suppose I could spend a bit more time on it basically you'd see this thing at the back here this thing is the thing that does this fifth that does the light and that does the fifth wheel now I'm not actually too bothered about the fact of the fifth wheel going up and down I'm talking about the trailer thing the hitching thing this thing here but I would like the lights on See, what I could do is I could have it where just the light comes on all the time because is that bulb going to drain the battery that much? And I think it would look kind of cool having the, the light on all the time, so I might just have that down permanently. I don't know whether I want to waste another two hours trying to get this to work. There's just too much variable. So this is a replacement I've got on here at the moment. It's got a lot of play. If you have a look here, there's a lot of play here, left to right. There's probably going to be a slight bit of wear here and then also on the plastics where it goes into because this has to go through a part of plastic and this does as well and what happens is it turns this top thing here but this is also cracked up here so I'm wondering if I'm going to get too involved with something that doesn't really affect the playability of the toy because it's not going to be hard just to reverse the trailer on and have it lock into position and then when you want to take it off, you just have to lift the trailer off. I'm not sure though, it would, it would be a nice feature, wouldn't it? Now that I've kind of got this thing working a bit, it would be a nice feature to have. Maybe I'll spend a, maybe I'll spend a little bit of time, maybe I'll spend half an hour on it, see if I can get anywhere. Okay, I am getting there, but it's much slower. So this is forward, and if you have a look, this wheel here is not turning. But when you go backwards, then it starts to turn. And there's a bit of strength on it. There is a fair bit of strength on it. There is a crack going across it that I'm going to have to try and super glue. And then when we go forward, it locks into place. The only problem is forward now definitely hasn't got the strength that it had before. So it's like I'm going to be sacrificing speed for the fact of doing the hitching on the trailer. And I think I might prefer the hitching on the trailer. Because I'm wondering whether over time it will just get more and more loose as things kind of fall into place. So at long last, I really feel like now that I'm starting to make progress. So I'm still going to muck around with it for a, for a while and then uh, get back to the video. Okay, I think I'm going to leave it at this now. So turn transmitter on, receiver. So that is going to be going forward. Can you see it's hesitating a bit? But that's because of this gear that's going on around here now. But this isn't moving around here. And yet when I go the other way, backwards, you can see this starts to move around now. And it's, it's strong. I'm pretty sure it's going to be enough to make this thing move up and down.
it's going to be something like that. Yep. Right. So happy with that. And the front seems to be loosening up a bit. Be interesting to see how fast that will actually move. I think it's probably going to be around this speed here. But that will be okay. And the steering is still doing what it's doing up front. So I think now, I think I'm happy to put this back together. I never thought I'd get to the stage where I'd be gluing the mudguard back on. That's just so, so, so happy. Okay, so we're all ready to put the cover back on it now. So good cable management, I've tied them out the way there, that's there, well they're, they're supposed to design to go through there, and I've made sure that these wires are away from here, that's the good thing about the telephone cable because it's solid core, you can kind of bend it into shape, so it's well away from there now. So that should be okay. I wonder whether this toy will ever be opened up again in its lifetime. Okay, I've got this working now, but the light's still not coming on. So I'm going to have to find out now why the light's not working. Okay, it's working now. It's just a case of getting the exact right gap between these two. Remember, I was undoing this and soldering it and moving it and stuff, so obviously it bent out of place a little bit. So now, I mean, I don't know if it's going to fully work when I screw it together because putting extra pressure on here can sometimes make it not work. But if you have a look now, that's forward, and now if I go into reverse, there you go, light on, light off, light on, light off, light on, light off. Excellent. Let's screw it up and let's see if it's still going to work. Okay, I've got it working. It's not perfect, but it's not bad. Look at that. And now forward. Now backwards, now forward. Yeah, I think it's to do with the light will go. I think this has to be up because it's just a simple switch. So uh, I need to get used to how the trailer goes on and stuff. So it must be when the light's off, you can then go forward and then the light will stay off. While if the light's on and you go forward, then the light is always going to be on forward, which is also quite nice because it means you can muck around with it. I'm happy with that, I'm going to go with that. Right, let's see now if this thing is actually going to move on the ground. I'm just going to let it go quickly just to see, get the wheel straightened. Actually, let's get that trailer flap up. There we go. Right, here we go. Yes. Yes, it's doing it. Oh, brilliant. Okay, let's just see if it does the turn in. It does. Forward, turn. Backward, turn. Turn. It's doing it. Result, result. Okay, I'm not going to tempt fate. I'm going to clean everything up. I'm going to get this in the kitchen. I'm going to get it all set up with the road cones and everything. The trailer on. And at long last, I think this Truckatronic is going to be on the road again. Right, let's go. Ah, oh, so here we have it. And for his first outing, I've given it all a nice good clean. And it was amazing the grind that came off it, but it's in really good condition. Now, I'm not just saying that because I've spent half my life on this. It really is in very good condition. I mean, if you look at the stickers here on this convoy, by the way, this back does open, but I think you have to have the inside off for it to open. But uh, look at the condition of it. A few scratches up top. Well happy with that. So, uh, what we should, let's drive the truck and let's park up the trailers in this bit here in the cones and let's try to reverse and let's see if we can hitch it up. And I also cleaned the controller as well, so that came up lovely. Right, so... I'm not sure, because these back doors open, it makes me think that maybe this isn't supposed to be in it, and it's just supposed to be this part here, rather than constantly... because otherwise you wouldn't be able to store anything in here. So, somebody said in one of the comments that it was working fine until they put all their car collection in here, so it must be like the Matchbox cars and then it stopped working. So as you can see, 
you can fit quite a lot in there. I honestly think this is a good, I honestly think it is a good toy. Right, so is that going to be okay like that? Yeah. So let's park this in here and let's try out my manoeuvring skills. So we're going to turn this on. Let's get the angle right. One second. Let's turn this on. We're off. We're off. Reverse. Steer is definitely working and it reverses slower, but I think that's okay. Forward. Reverse. It's certainly working. It hasn't got a lot of lock on the uh, on the steering. Let's go around this way. If anything, it's a bit too fast in forward. Right, I'm going to try and uh, bring it round, and then we'll try and hitch up the trailer. It's actually very fast in forward. Very fast. I'd love to see what it worked like originally to see if it was if it was like this or not. You can see the lights coming on when it does the reverse. So I'm lining this up quite good. It's gonna be very hard though because there's no control of the uh, you've just got to kind of go in full belt. I wish it was proportional on the way in. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Is that it? That's it, I've got a trailer. I've got it. Look at it. There we go. I did so oh, of course, with the trailer, you've got to go the opposite, haven't you? Hold on now. How am I going to get this trailer around? I'm not, am I? You've got to go this way around. Yeah, I remember that this, when I was, uh, when I was young, it's really hard to control trucks. Let me see if I can get it round this way. Oh, I've lost my trailer, I've lost it. Right, I'm not going to be able to see there. I'll tell you what, let's change the trailer now to the fuel tanker. And then, turn, turn, turn. In through the cones. Oh, I hit one. It's quite powerful. How good is that? I think it's working really well. Let me change the trailer over to the fuel tanker and we'll load that one up and we'll try to take that one for a spin and then reverse it and more importantly try to unhitch it as well. Okay, so on with this again. On with this and we're off. Lining it up. Come on, come on, come on. We're in. We're in. Much harder with the trailer on. into here. This ain't ever gonna happen is it? No, I've lost it again. The big downfall with this one is the steering. There's just not enough lock on it. I'm glad, I, I'm glad I fixed the hitch thing because that is probably one of the main things off it.
Let's just bring it round. There we go. Let's turn it off. Right, so let's just give it one more spin round. Yeah, it's definitely quicker without the trailers. And it's a lot more easier to control as well. Right, I think we'll bring it in now. And let's talk about this video. Because I think out of all the fixes I've done so far, the fixes and the fails as well, I think by, by far this has been the most challenging. And there was many times where I was ready to give up. Let's turn it off, it's quite noisy. So, I think this is the ultimate lesson for perseverance pays off. Now in this case, you might be thinking, Vince, you're an idiot. It's a 1979 toy which is worthless and you've spent a day of your life between the last video and this video fixing it. But it just shows you what can happen with perseverance. So this had a huge amount wrong with it. Every single gear was either cracked, worn, whatever. So each one of them needed gluing and then some of them needed replacing as well. So I replaced them when I could, but if I didn't have the size then they were glued. And it wasn't just that, it was all the learning about it as you go along as well. So although, of course, most people wouldn't do this, I'm doing it because I get to make a video out of it and also I enjoy doing it as well. Even if I wasn't doing a video, I think I probably would have spent as long doing this. But what I needed was the motivation of the viewers to say they would like to see it on the road again and also telling me what they think is wrong. So for example, I didn't think to look at the motors. When I was told about the motors, then it really did make sense. If the motors are dirty, they're gonna be weaker. If the motors are stronger, there's more chance of it doing the steering. Also putting the grease in, people telling me about the, uh, the activator for the super glue, this all helps. So now, when it comes to perseverance, I really do think you can do most things in life, even if it's beyond your ability. If you just take it one small step at a time, you can work through many things, whether it's a problem or whether it's something like, you know, you wanna change job, you wanna lose weight. If, when it comes to something like losing weight, not that I don't know anything about this, but you see, if you look at it at the very beginning and you've got 10 stone to lose, you're never going to do it if you think, oh, I've got a whole 10 stone to lose, that's impossible. But if you just take it bit by bit, just day by day, just go for a walk and just walk an extra 10 metres, it all helps. And by doing a little bit, each time a little bit more, you will eventually get there. So with this one, I was ready to throw the towel in so many times, but it kept giving me that little bit more. So for example, you know, three gears were now moving. Now I was waiting for the fourth gear to move. And then I get the fourth gear to move and then the fifth gear would be failing. But progress was being made all along. And I think it's really important to persevere at something. And you'll find that most successful people in life are, it's not that they're, they're born brilliant, but what they have is the ability to not take the knockbacks and just get on with it and persevere at something. So you'll find that most successful rich people, they fail loads of times, but what they do is they keep at it until they do succeed. While a lot of people who maybe don't succeed, they give up too easy. Now, I, in other things in my life, do give up quite easy. Uh, you know, I was never a sort of go-getter when it came, comes to like work-related things, but a lot of that could be to do with lack of confidence. But in other fields, I really do stick at something. For example, if you tell me to, you know, lay a patio in the garden or clean something or like get something working, I will stick at that till the bitter end until really there's no other options. I'm, I'm convinced at the end that it can't be fixed or it can't be finished for whatever reason, but normally I will get that done. So uh, yeah, for this one here, I really, well, I'll be honest, I hated doing it most of the time because it was a nightmare. But now that it's finished, I have such a sense of achievement, which is madness because it's just a toy that really isn't, you know, like a Tamiya radio control car would just, you know, shove this to one side every day of the week. But to see the sorry state it was in, where the wheels wouldn't turn, the front wheels wouldn't turn, and now to see it go around the kitchen, I'm so, so happy that I stuck with this one. 
So thanks a lot for all the comments. You know I appreciate it. I don't always get back to people. It doesn't mean I don't read the comments. I do read the comments. It's just unfortunately as you kind of the channel gets bigger, which is obviously a good thing, you have less time to get back apart from like a thumbs up or a thanks. So it's not that I'm sort of belittling people or being rude when I just say thanks for the info, thanks for the comments. It's just that I can't write a paragraph to everybody because there'd be no time to actually do the videos because obviously I have quite a few videos and there's quite a few comments that come through. There's not quite a few there's hundreds of comments that come through but I do actually spend time out of every single day to read them all because especially when it comes to the fix it videos I do most of my learning through the comments from people watching and telling me where I went wrong and giving me advice and guidelines and stuff so don't think that I'm ever ignoring you it might look like I'm ignoring you but I have read the comments I try to take it all in, but sometimes when you've got a lot of information in front of you, you might only take one or two bits, and sometimes it might take four or five people to tell you that information before it sinks in. So, a big thumbs up to everybody who's uh, watched me, subscribed, advice, thanks so much. You can tell I'm really happy with this one. So, so glad that I revisited it. So, uh, well, well happy, and I think now I'm going to muck around with this for a while and see, uh, see if I can get used to how to maneuver this trailer at the back of it. So thank you so much. I appreciate it. Take care. Bye now.